Hi, friends. I'm Emily Lay, and you're listening to The Simplified Podcast. If you're looking for a quiet place where you can filter out the noise and the hustle, this is it. Every week, I invite you to slow down and join me to explore practical ways to organize and automate the complicated parts of life so you can focus on what truly matters most. We launched our brand new linen journal collection with six different options to choose from. They are so beautiful, you guys. They are so special and incredibly well-made. This is a collection that we have been working on forever, and we hope that you will head over to emilylay.com to get yours today. It's my birthday week. Well, it's my birthday month. I love a birthday. I love to celebrate. I am turning 39 on Monday. 39. 39. Do you get as reflective on your birthday as I do? Every time the daffodils start to poke their heads out of the ground, I know it's time for me to get started getting excited because A, my birthday is almost here, and B, spring is almost here too. Those flowers remind me that we're coming into a new season, and so am I. I've lived a lot of life since I've seen the last crop of daffodils. It makes me smile because my 38th year was just really full. And I don't want to let anything I've learned about myself and the world around me over the past year slip by. I always find that if I take a minute and think about those lessons, they stick with me longer. So I spent some time writing about the things I learned about myself. Some were funny, some were unexpected, some were hard, and some I'm really proud of. I would like to share eight of them here with you today. So here we go. Eight things I learned in my 38th year. (laughs) Number one, much to everyone's surprise, I am a cat person. I've never had a cat, let alone considered myself a cat person. But one day, it was the night before Halloween, my family and I got a surprise. A precious little black kitty showed up on our back porch. She was tiny and sweet and snuggly and so hungry and so loud. We heard her meowing all the way upstairs. The main level of our house is in the upstairs. And from the moment she came into our lives, this kitty became my little shadow. She walked all over my computer keyboard. She rubbed all up against my face and my hair. When I laid on the couch, she'd crawl on top of me and lay on my chest where I'd gently feel her purr with delight. We had a three-day love affair with Tuna, the cat. That's what the kids named her, so we went with it because we fed her Tuna when she got here. Very creative. She is with her forever home now, a very sweet family I met on Instagram, and I'm so grateful for it because I fell in love with this sweet cat, like deep, deep, hard in love in just those three days. But the boys here are all allergic, or we would have kept her. Having Tuna reminded me what a precious companion a pet can be. We haven't had a pet since our sweet dog's Briggs passed away a while ago, many years ago. And I'll forever be grateful for Tuna, and so will our furry new family member who is coming soon. Number two, I love going on adventures with my family. Listen, I'm a really big homebody. I love that I get to wake up in my home and walk down the hall to my office. It is a privilege and a gift that I don't take lightly. Home is my sanctuary and my happy place. But I also love getting out to explore the world, especially with my family. I love going to our favorite hangout spot at Lake Oconee in Georgia. And I loved getting to go on my first overseas international trip to Paris, especially because we got to do it with our whole family. I cannot say enough about that experience. I just loved experiencing a different culture, trying to navigate a new language, albeit very poorly. I loved being in a country with such a rich history and watching my kids take it all in as well. It left me with a lot to think about, and I know I'll be processing that week for a long time, but being in France made me think about my place in the world and all the things that I could be doing in it. I'm sure I'll have more to report on all the things I learned from my adventures this year, but suffice it to say, traveling is fun, and I cannot wait to do it again. Number three, I'm going to stop chasing numbers. Instead, I am going to embrace nourishing my body and feeling my best. I talked about this a few weeks ago with my friend Jess Connolly, and it was such a good reminder for me. I am so much more than a number stitched into my jeans or flashing on a scale. 
I can do things that nourish my body and help me feel my best. And that doesn't always correlate with the numbers that all these outside forces tell me are the quote, good ones. Last year, I stopped workouts that I didn't enjoy. Instead, I took more walks around the neighborhood, which I really, really love, especially with my oldest, Brady, at night. I started experimenting with foods and recipes that make my body feel like her best self. And I also enjoyed some treats that I wanted. Those two things can coexist. Food isn't good or bad. It's just food. I am not perfect at any of this by any means, but I have learned how much better I feel when I stop judging myself and instead I gently care for myself. That feels good to me as a person and it feels good to me as a mother of kids who are coming up behind me and going to have their own relationships with their own bodies. So definitely learned a lot there. Number four, celebrating little wins is just as important as celebrating the big ones. Listen, I love hitting a big milestone. I am very goal oriented. I love achieving great big things, but I don't achieve big things every day. I've learned that big achievements are made of countless small wins. And these days, I think those small wins are definitely worth celebrating. I remember one day last fall, the kids had just gone back to school. They'd had a long week of tests and homework and sitting still for hours on end while wearing a mask. They even had to miss out on a few fun things because I was concerned about COVID safety. I knew that last part was especially hard. So to celebrate doing some hard things for the greater good, when I picked them up from school, I greeted them with some candy and soda, which are two things our kids don't get very often and especially not right after school pickup. You would have thought they won the lottery. They were so excited. And it wasn't just like any soda. I got the ridiculous orange Fanta. (laughs) Again, it was a small thing, but it had a big impact. And I want to celebrate more small wins. I think they're good for my heart in theirs too. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. We all know that relationships take work. And the most important one is your relationship with yourself. And one of the best things I've ever done for myself is to see a therapist. Even when it feels hard, even when I don't want to, I always feel better when I take a few minutes to talk with my therapist and think about how to move forward. And you can start making time to talk to a therapist today with BetterHelp. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and my listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash simplified. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash simplified. Do you know what kids love more than anything? Getting something in the mail with their name on it. And the most favorite mail day of the month is KiwiCo Day. In the Lay family, we love KiwiCo. Here's how it works. Every single month, KiwiCo will send your kid a super cool hands-on project that taps into something they're interested in, like science, art, or geography. Your kid might discover the science behind what makes a delicious fluffy pancake, or they might engineer their very own pinball machine. My kids absolutely love KiwiCo, and as soon as it hits our doorstep, they have got those things on the kitchen table, opened up, and are doing them independently. That is the best part. Help your child redefine learning with play and let them explore hands-on projects that build confidence, creativity, and critical thinking skills all year long. You can get 50% off your first month, plus free shipping on any crate line with the code SIMPLIFIED at KiwiCo. Com. That is an awesome deal, you guys. That's 50% off your first month at kiwico.com with promo code SIMPLIFIED. Number five, my kids are growing up and it's my job to help them stretch their wings. This one puts a lump in my throat because this has become so deeply personal and important to me. Last year, Brady went to sleepaway camp for the first time. Caroline made me a dance mom. And Tyler is turning into a budding chef. I mean, which six-year-old loves salmon as much as he does? That kid would eat salmon for every meal if I let him. It's super important to Brian and to me to encourage our kids to step outside their comfort zones and do stuff. We want our home to be the nest they come home to, not a bubble to keep them in. And if you're a mother or someone who loves little ones, you know exactly how double-edged that sword is. 
it is so exciting to see your kids spread their wings. And it's also so oddly, like, I don't want to say painful, but tender. Like, I, I just want to keep you a baby forever and protect you from the world. But I also just want to see you fly. The nest, not the bubble phrase came to my mind the other day while I was talking to a friend. And it just really stuck with me, almost like Grace Not Perfection did in the earliest days of parenting. We've had so much fun finding adventure lately and not always the pay for it kind. Sometimes we find it in the backyard or at the kitchen counter or even in the pages of a great book. We can learn so much about ourselves and the world around us when we push ourselves to step outside familiar territory and discover new things. It's good for the kids and it's good for me too. Number six, making time for friendship is always worth it. More than ever, since we have moved home and I've gotten older, I am so thankful for my friends, both those that are here in Pensacola and those we left behind in Tampa and those that live far away. Friendship as an adult is hard though. It's not like when you're a kid and you saw your friends every day at school and you could easily hang out after. Friendship as an adult looks a little different. It takes intention and care. It takes showing up again and again and again. Over the past couple years, I've enjoyed some of the sweetest friendships with women here in Pensacola. Every text, every casserole that shows up on my counter when I'm sick, every laugh and good cry over a glass of wine is just so precious to me. I will always be grateful for these women in hard times and good ones. Number seven, I can share my story in new ways. This one makes me smile. Never, ever, ever <laughs> did I think I would be a podcaster. And yet, here we are, almost a year later, with more than 50 episodes launched into the world. You guys made me a podcaster, you know. You show up here week after week listening to these episodes and sharing your own stories with me in the posts and DMs and reviews. I'm really grateful for the podcast community we've built here, and I can't wait to keep showing up to serve you this way for a long, long time. I've also learned that I can share my heart through new kinds of books. I wrote my very first children's book this past year. It's called You're Always Enough, and it comes out in May. I don't even have words for how excited I am about this new chapter, if you will, in my writing career. It's something that I enjoyed immensely, and it just lit me on fire while I was doing it. I immediately pictured all the kids that are going to have this book in their hands and how deeply, sincerely, I hope that these kids, my own and yours and all the others, know that they are enough no matter what, no matter who they are no matter what they look like, no matter what confusing thoughts or feelings they have, no matter what their interests are, no matter how differently abled, specially abled they are, they are enough. And this book is super important to me. So I'm really excited about being able to do things like that. I'm also writing another book that should make its way into your hands later this year. It's something new I've never, ever done. A bigger project than anything I've ever taken on. I'm scared. I'm excited. I can't wait to show it to you. More to that, you know, coming soon, but it's been a journey. And lastly, number eight, it is amazing what women can do when they come together. When I think back on my 38th year, I will definitely be most floored by the way you guys came together and gave your hard earned dollars to some people who really needed you. This is something you didn't have to do. This is something you did because you were kind and generous, hopeful and helpful. In the span of a week, you raised over $50,000 for two organizations here in the Southeast, one here in Pensacola at Christian Center and then the Rally Foundation for Childhood Cancer Research. I, I will never forget the moment when at 3 a.m., I couldn't sleep. I had volunteered with my family at Epps Christian Center for a Thanksgiving event they did to provide food and drinks for Thanksgiving to those in need. And it was just such a welcoming, wonderful place where everyone was made to feel, made to know that they mattered, that they were cared for, that they were loved. And I knew that they needed money to buy some food container storage units to put outside of this building they had, and then they were trying to pay off this mortgage that they had. And so at 3 a.m., I, I just could not sleep, and I, I thought, I just, I just wonder if maybe there's a way we can gather, we can gather dollars on Instagram. Like maybe there's more friends out there who, 
you know, can give $2 or $20 or $200, you know, whatever it is to help come together for these people. So I posted it on Instagram at 3 a.m., the story. I posted my Venmo link and went back to sleep. I woke up at 7 o'clock in the morning to $9,000 in my Venmo. I, I screamed. Brian was like, what's going on? Are the kids okay? I just... I don't, I mean, I still don't even have words for it. I, we were able to write Epps Christian Center and the amazing pastor, Sylvia Tisdale, a check for $35,000. I just, I don't know. God is amazing. You guys are amazing. That is one of the highlights of my 38th year. It was incredible. And then we raised more money, $10,000 that was matched by another $10,000 gift for the Rally Foundation for Childhood Cancer Research, which I have been involved with on their board of advisors. And... That, again, just uh, amazing. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I will never forget what the Simplified Sisterhood did when you joined hands to do good in the world. I am in awe of you, and I am so grateful for each and every one of you, no matter how you show up here in this community. Those 50-cent donations that came through, the ones for $1.37, those that were clearly thought and, and really thought through and gifted, like, wow, that just, thank you. Well, there you have it. Those are a few things I learned from my last journey around the sun. I can't wait to see what God has in store for me next. As we close out this episode, I would like to say a blessing for you as we leave this time together and get back into our days. Wherever you are, I hope you take a few minutes to take stock of your blessings. I hope you spend some time thinking through the person you are and how much you've grown in the past few years. I hope you see the same spark you had when you were a child. And I hope it's kindled into a fire that burns with passion all of your days. As always, I like to leave a little tip to help you put what we've talked about today into practice. So here's your task for this week. You don't have to wait for any sort of milestone to take stock of your life. So this week, think about three of the biggest lessons you've learned about yourself or the world around you this past year. What kind of impact has this lesson had on you? How's this lesson changed the way you move through the world? Then, for more inspiration, you could ask a friend or family member what they've learned this past year. The answers might surprise you, which is all the more reason to ask. Thank you for listening to the Simplified Podcast. I hope today's episode inspired you to think about your own journey and take stock of the lessons you've learned along the way. You can find show notes for this episode at emilylay.com slash podcast, where you can check out links and resources I mentioned here. And you can shop the Simplified brand of planners and products. If you're loving this show, you should definitely subscribe to it if you haven't already. That way, it'll just show up in your feed without you even having to search for it. Talk about simple. And while you're at it, leave us a rating and review. That helps the show find its way to more people who would enjoy it as well. Thank you so much for doing that. And until next time, thank you for listening. Bye.